In this video, we're going to talk about three different types of series tests. The first one is alternating series. The terms of the series alternate between positive, negative, positive, negative. We're going to have a strategy for that and we'll get to it in the video. The second test is called the ratio test. This is when I take the ratio an plus one divided by an and I take the limit as n goes to infinity. We're going to have some criteria for that. We'll get into it in the video. And the third type is called the root test. We're going to take the nth root of the terms of the series and see what happens as n goes to infinity. The ratio test and the root test, sometimes they're inconclusive. Uh, so I'm going to point out to you recommendations for when you should use each different type of test. We're also going to cover in this video different types of convergence. So when you have a series that has positive and negative terms, one thing that you can do to that series is just take the absolute value of everything so that everything is positive. And the question is, when you do that, when you omit all of the minus signs and make everything positive, does the resulting series converge or diverge? So we'll get into some definitions, two different concepts called converging absolutely and converging conditionally. We'll get into the details in this video. First, let's talk about the alternating series test. The alternating series test is also known as AST, and here's the type of series you should apply it on. Something where the terms alternate between plus and minus. A typical example would have negative 1 to the n power. If n is even, then this coefficient is a plus, and if n is odd, then this coefficient is a minus. The bn's here are assumed to be the positive part of the series. A series that has this format converges if the positive part, the bn's, are both decreasing and approaching zero. Let's explore a little bit about why that's true. In order to understand it, we're going to look at the partial sums of the alternating series. The first partial sum is just the first term. The second partial sum is the sum of the first two terms. Notice that the first one is negative, the next one is positive because this is alternating and continuing in this manner, etc. The first partial sum, you can place that on a number line. The second partial sum will be equal to the first partial sum, but plus an extra B2 term. So if the first partial sum is located here on the number line, the second partial sum should should be located B2 units off to the right of the first partial sum. In comparison to the second partial sum, the third partial sum subtracts B3. Continuing in this manner, B4 will give us the distance to the fourth partial sum. Then we'll be subtracting B5 and adding B6, etc., etc. And we'll just keep going. So the criteria here is that the Bn's, or the magnitude of the individual terms, has to be decreasing so that these steps for the partial sum are decreasing, and the size of the bn's has to approach zero, or the magnitude of the bn's has to approach zero. That means that not only are they getting smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller, but the distance in between the partial sums is getting closer and closer to zero, so it is converging to some value. And remember, whatever value the partial sums approaches, that is the value of the series. We covered that a couple videos ago. You can see this is an alternating series because we have minus 1 to the n in the series. The positive part of this series is the 1 over n. In order to apply the AST, we have to check that the terms are decreasing. So here's what we get if we plug in n plus 1, and here's what we get when we plug in n. How are these related to each other? Well, the left one has a bigger denominator, so overall it must be smaller. So yeah, it looks like they are decreasing. Bn plus 1 is smaller than Bn. As the indexing gets bigger, the Bn ends get smaller. Now let's check if the limit of the magnitude of the positive part approaches zero. Of course this is an easy one, 1 over infinity does indeed yep, go to zero, and so yes, the second criteria for AST is also satisfied. There we go. So this does converge by AST. Let's do another one. The positive part is k over k cubed plus 1. So applying the alternating series test, we want to try to see if bk plus 1, is it smaller then bk, we have to figure this out, <laughs> question mark, right? So let's look at these two quantities. In the numerator, it looks like the left side is bigger, so that indicates there should be a greater than symbol. However, the denominator is also bigger. Remember, if the denominator is bigger, that means that overall it's smaller. That indicates it should be a less than sign. So actually, this is really confusing. I cannot figure out what to put in terms of an inequality here. This is very similar to the previous video where the direct comparison didn't 
didn't work out. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna replace the k's with x's. Recall a basic fact from calculus one, that if a function is decreasing, then that means the first derivative is less than zero. As long as this function is decreasing, then the bk's will be decreasing, and the first part of the ast will be verified. Taking the first derivative of this, we'll need the quotient rule, and then we do a little bit of simplifying, and there's our first derivative. Now take a look at this quantity. The bottom is always positive because it's squared, and the top, just test it out, like plug in some x values. Most certainly, if the x values are bigger than one, you will have a negative first derivative. So therefore, the bk's are also decreasing for k greater than or equal to one. So don't forget that trick using the first derivative. The next part of the AST is to check whether the bk's approach zero. Looking at this limit, we can see that the power in the denominator is bigger, so this does approach zero. So it looks like the two conditions for AST work out, and so yes, this thing converges. We're gonna cover some terminology. If you have a series, um, any type, alternating or regular, any series at all, if that series converges, and if the corresponding positive series, where you essentially get rid of all the minus signs, if that as a separate series also converges, then we say that the original series is called absolutely convergent. Or if the original series converges, but the positive series does not converge, then that series is called conditionally convergent. Let's look back at the two examples that we already did in this video. We determined that each one one of these examples converges by the alternating series test, let's determine whether that convergence is conditional or absolute. Starting with the first one on the left, what we're going to do is consider the corresponding positive series where we essentially just get rid of all the minus signs, so the numerator just becomes a 1. I hope you recognize the series, that's the harmonic series it diverges. So therefore, the original series is called conditionally convergent. In other words, the convergence of this uh, really is conditional on the existence of these minus signs. The minus signs are crucial in order for this series to converge. If you get rid of those minus signs and just do the positive series, uh, sorry, it diverges, okay? So this is only convergent, conditional on the existence of these minus signs. Let's look at the next one over here. The corresponding positive series, that series can be directly compared to a P series with P equals 2, and that P series converges, so it looks like for this series, not only does the original series converge by the alternating series test, but this is like a really strong convergence. I can omit all of the minus signs, and it still converges. This is absolutely convergent. So just to recap, if the original series converges and the positive series diverges, that's called converging conditionally. If the original series converges and and the positive part converges, that's called converging absolutely. Let's move on to the ratio test. The ratio test says that if we take the limit as n goes to infinity of the ratio of consecutive terms, a n plus 1 divided by a n with absolute values, take that limit. If that limit is less than 1, then the series converges, greater than 1, then it diverges, and if you get 1, then, uh, sorry, you got to use a different test, uh, it's inconclusive in that case. How can you avoid this inconclusive? inclusive case, you have to make smart choices about when you apply the ratio test in order to avoid a lot of work and getting inconclusive and then having to start all over again. Keep in mind that the ratio test works uh, pretty well if there are exponentials or factorials in the problem. Polynomials, not so much. Uh, for polynomials, the ratio test tends to be inconclusive, so try not to use it for polynomials. As you can see, 2 to the 2n, that's 4 to the n, and that's an exponential. We also have a factorial in the bottom, so this is a great series to do the ratio test on. We're going to calculate the limit of the consecutive terms, and here you can see everywhere I see an n, I'm replacing that n with an n plus 1. So this in the numerator is the a n plus 1 term, and the denominator is the a n term. Now as you can see, we've got these absolute value signs on the outside. 
remember that the absolute value will work like just taking the absolute value of each individual piece inside here that's multiplied together. As you can see, these exponentials are positive, so the absolute value signs are kind of extraneous. Same thing with the factorials. This is already positive, so I don't actually need these absolute value signs. And the plus minus terms from the alternating part, those after I take the absolute value will always just give me one. So now I can vastly simplify. I don't need the absolute values here. These pieces cancel out because the absolute value is one. And now I'm taking this fraction divided by that fraction in the denominator, so I'm flipping the fraction in the denominator. Now we're just going to slightly rearrange. Remember, you can multiply in any order. So let's just switch the order of the numerators. There we go. Now I'm gathering like terms, put the factorials together, and put the exponentials together. Now we'll use a little bit of basic algebra and a little work with the factorials. Remember, factorial means a number, n plus 1, multiplied by each integer previous. So n plus 1 factorial is equal to n plus 1 and then times all of the integers less than n plus 1. Now we get some cancellations. Everything vastly simplifies. Here the numerator approaches 4, the denominator approaches infinity, so overall this limit goes to 0. 0 is certainly less than 1. So using the ratio test, this series converges. I want to briefly talk about whether this convergence is conditional or absolute. Let's just do a little thought experiment in order to see what would happen if we omitted these minus signs in order to get the corresponding positive series. Then these minus signs would go away, but they already went away in the original calculation. We'd get the same result down here, and we would still get that it converges, right? So with the ratio test, because you have these big absolute value signs on the outside, whether you include the minus signs or not, you're still going to get the same result. So this series is said to converge absolutely. Now let's talk about the root test. The root test says if I take any series and the absolute value of the terms and then the nth root of those terms and then take the limit as n goes to infinity, as long as that limit is less than 1, the series converges greater than 1, then it diverges. And similar to the previous test, if l is equal to 1, then the test is inconclusive. But the root test works pretty well if you have like some expression with n's in it and then it's parentheses and then raised to the n power. Why? Because we're going to take the nth root of that n power. So this type of series, the root test tends to work pretty good. Let's look at this example. Notice that we've got some expression involving n's and then up in the power here we have n squared. So this indicates that the root test is a good choice. So here's what we're going to do. According to the root test, we should take the terms of the series and take the nth root of those terms and take the limit as n goes to infinity. Remember that the nth root means a 1 over n power and a power raised to a power. You multiply the powers, so the power ends up just being a single n. So here's our simplified limit. Now, something that you may or may not remember from pre-calculus class is this letter e, which is a special number, kind of like pi, but e is just a different number. This is 2.718, etc., etc. That number, e, has a definition. It's the limit as n goes to infinity of 1 plus 1 over n raised to the n power. If I had 2n in the denominator, as long as there's a 2n also in the exponent, the limit as n goes to infinity of this expression will still be e. As long as the exponent and the denominator have the same quantity and that quantity is approaching infinity, the value of that limit is e. Okay, basic fact from pre-calc. If you don't remember it, then there you go. It's in the box. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert a 2 because this little factor over here means that I wish that the denominator and the exponent matched. But of course, I don't want to change the problem. So if I multiply by 2, I'm also going to multiply by a half up in the power here. Now, this circled part inside the brackets will approach e. And then I have an extra one-half power, so the final value of the limit is e to the one-half power. The square root of e is greater than one. And according to the rules for the root test, if the value of the limit is greater than one, then the series diverges. So this series diverges. So I hope you enjoyed this video on alternating series. 
ratio tests and root tests. Remember that you should be able to have the skill of looking at a series and saying, ooh, that one looks like it should be ratio test. That one looks like it's alternating series. This is one of the main skills that you wanna develop throughout the whole chapter on series. I'll see you in class.